we will start this invigorating slings myofascial training practice in a basic long sit. Sit right on top of your sit bones, hold on behind the knees, and then keeping your feet in place, gently pull them towards the sit bones. Release the pull, engage pelvic floor and abdominals to curl back. Feel the gliding sensation in your back. With the help of your arms, you slide the feet along the floor, lift the legs off the floor as you are curling down. Hug the knees close, restful pose. Step one foot after the other onto the floor. Align the legs hip distance apart and parallel. And once again, engaging pelvic floor and abdominals, you tilt the pelvis back. Let the fascia in your back glide. And then you're peeling the spine off the floor vertebra by vertebra, in the smoothest manner possible. When you have arrived in the shoulder bridge position, take the massage balls, place them beneath your pelvis, roll down, settle the pelvis on the massage balls. Establish a centered alignment in your pelvis and the lower back, Rest your arms on the floor, feel the broadness in your chest. Tune into your center, engage pelvic floor and deep abdominals lightly and deliberately. Now you keep a consistent engagement. Float one leg into tabletop and then float the leg down, toes, heel, landing on the floor. Second leg, float it into tabletop, and then you float it down again, articulating the foot as it lands. Floating the first leg back up into tabletop, and you continue in your own rhythm. Now your awareness is in your midsection, that consistent deep activation of pelvic floor and abdominals. That keeps the pelvis and the lower back dynamically stabilized in collaboration with your deep back muscles and the fascial corsets that are wrapping around the waistline. Now your deepest corset is reaching up to the inside of the rib cage. So the front of the rib cage is gently closed also. One more leg float. And then you're floating the first leg into tabletop again. Pause. Engage pelvic floor and abdominals more strongly. Float your second leg into tabletop, connect the legs, let the lower legs dangle. So less abdominal activity needed. Now you draw the knees towards the chest, you let the pelvis tilt back, the lower back curl. Shift the knees away from the chest, tip with your toes on the floor, and then knees towards the chest. A few more times in a very easeful rhythm. How smooth can you make this movement? Can you feel that once you just initiated drawing the knees towards the chest, the rest of the body follows? The weight of the knees takes the pelvis and the lower back into a curl. You shift the knees back and your lower back and your pelvis center. So this is an outside-in movement that is supported from deep inside muscles and fascia. Now let's add rhythm. So a double springy movement. You briefly tap with your toes on the floor and then gentle lumbar spring. We are aiming to elasticize the fascia of your lower back. So we have multiple layers. They are very resilient. They love to move and they love to be moved in 
different ways. And one of the ways that's really beneficial is a rhythmical dynamic way that elasticizes the fascia. Now, if that feels really buoyant and playful to you, you can extend the legs the next time you bounce and enhance maybe the fascial spring in your back and you also get a really nice lengthening, dynamic lengthening in the back of the legs. So how bouncy can you make this? What is your rhythm that makes you feel springy and uplifted in this movement? We have a double exhalation to bounce, followed by an inhalation. Two more times. Rhythm is a key to springiness. Toes to the floor, moving into a slow movement again, so fascia also loves contrast. Your legs are once again hip distance and parallel. You tilt the pelvis back, you curl up smoothly into a shoulder bridge position. Take the balls away from beneath your pelvis. Relax your arms on the floor. Draw the pubic bone more up towards the sternum. And then you press your feet gently away from the body. Start to roll down. Keep the front of the hips as open as possible until the pelvis settles on the floor. Take the massage domes to either side of your body and then with your pelvis centered, float your left leg into a tabletop position. Extend the leg and then lower the leg onto the floor. Fold the right leg over the left into an easy twist. Place the flat side of the dome onto the outside of the leg and with your arm, start to rock the leg. So you still have a gentle engagement in the pelvic floor and deep abdominal muscles, providing dynamic stabilization for the lower back. And at the same time, you're creating a rhythmical rocking motion with your left arm. Now, the rocking motion extends from the pelvis to your mid-upper back where you are rocking your spine. So we have a wonderful multidimensional mobilization for the spine that creates glide inside of the body, so around the spine and also on the inside of the rib cage. And then you can roll back onto your back, center the pelvis and the lower back, Press your right foot lightly onto the floor, leg extension left, bend the left knee, step the foot onto the floor, leg float, other side, extend the leg, lower the leg down and fold your left leg over the right, place the dome flat side down onto the leg and start to rock the leg. Your left shoulder on the floor in an easeful manner. So you have even more dynamic mobilization in your spine. Now another benefit or feeling that I find really beneficial is the sense of opening in the back of the pelvis. And for many of us, that is a really um, <laughs> useful feeling and also what we're doing right now, a useful action to assist us balancing the pelvis above the legs in walking or in standing. So you can now roll back onto your lower back, press the left foot onto the floor, leg lift right, bend the knee, Step the foot onto the floor. The legs are once again parallel. You tilt the pelvis back. You curl up in a smooth manner where muscles and fascia collaborate with ease. Shoulder bridge position. 
lift up extra from the pubic bone, press the feet lightly away from the body, start to roll down. And then at the end, you release the pushing away of the feet to center the pelvis. Reach your arms up towards the ceiling. Float one leg into tabletop. Float your second leg into tabletop. Connect the legs. Lift the head and shoulders off the floor. Curl up, hold on behind the knees. And then you press the legs into the hands. Basic rolling up into a spine stretch, forehead towards the knees. Pull the heels towards the sit bones. Curl up into a basic long sit. And then you can cross the legs and move into a low kneeling position. So in low kneeling, you can place the massage domes behind the knees, round side down. And then sit back into a low kneeling position. So first, the art of non-doing. Manana competence. So we just sit and wait and we let a melting sensation take place. Letting the massage domes melt into the fascia between the muscles of the calves. And then you can easily start to sway the pelvis from side to side. And it's kind of you're rocking the massage domes into the tissue of your calves and you give them a really nice deep massage. But it's the kind of massage that you want to go on. So you make it as nice on your body as possible. And then you can find a still place. Lift the weight of the massage domes, remove them Sit back into low kneeling and just for a moment, just let the tissue settle. And then you fold forward and place the massage domes beneath your ankles, the front of the ankles. And once again, first, for a moment, we just give the tissue time to adapt and we wait. And either the feeling can be you let the massage domes melt into the tissue or you let the tissue melt over the massage domes. And it's a moment of stillness, inner and outer stillness. And then we have movement. With one foot, you reach back, you lift the top of the foot off the floor, you reach back with the toes, you spread the toes, then you soften the foot, relax it. Reach, lift, spread the toes of the other foot, and release. First foot again, reaching, lifting, spreading, softening and the second one again and then you have a choice we go one more time each foot or both feet at the same time so you're stimulating an area of the body that's frequently overlooked and it's a really important part it sends information up to the brain of what's going on in the feet. So we want this area alive and vibrant. And at the same time, you're stimulating light and hydration, so nourishing the fascia. Just pause for a moment. And then lean forward, unweight the ankle, so you can remove the massage domes. 
And then from here, we are going into a high kneeling position. Hopefully you're appreciating the sensation in your ankles. Maybe there's a bit more opening. So you can turn around facing the screen now and start in low kneeling. Raise your arms overhead, active forward fold, arm circle back, tilt the pelvis back, curl up. Open your arms, place your hands to the front of the hips. The knees can be about hip distance apart or wider or a bit more narrow. Hip distance is a guide. So with your pelvis and your spine centered, you fold from the hips, active forward fold, tilt the pelvis back, curl up smoothly. Inhalation centered. Exhalation Tilt the pelvis back, articulate the spine. Core stabilization, coupled with core strength. And it's not just core strength. As you're curling up, you're also promoting glide, fascial glide in your back, in your thighs. So within the thigh muscles and around them, and it's invaluable for the knees. Last time curling up, and then you can turn your right foot out, lift the right knee, and establish a 90-90 kneeling, a 90-90 gate pose, sorry. The left hand goes to the front of the hip, right hand to the inside of the knee, light activation through the center, glide into a hip release position, explore your end range, lift slightly, hold. Press the heel and the knee towards each other. Feel the strength radiating up from your inner thighs into your central core. And then you press the foot away from the body. Feel the muscle tone lower. And then walk forward. So slow, deliberate walking motion into a 90-90 kneeling position. Elongate the spine, raise your arms forward and upward, arm arc, spiraling twist towards the right, place your left hand against the outside of the right knee, inhalation, press the hand against the knee, exhalation, release. Pressing the hand against the knee spirals the spine around. When you release the pressure, the spine despirals. What you actively do, besides pressing and releasing the hand, is elongating the spine. And then you can turn your palm of the right hand forward and gradually start to lift the arm. <laughs> One of the main aims here is elasticizing the fascia of the abdominals, oblique abdominals, and deep spinal muscles. So we go one more time. And the arm, your left arm, is pulling the bowstring. Now, your right arm, you let it swing forward and back. Exhale and inhale. And if you like to reverse the breathing pattern, that is good too. So can you let the arm lead? Can you let the spine follow? And at the same time, keep the length in your spine. Let's do one more. Both arms overhead, open spiraling twist, and then reach out first with your left arm and then let the arm swing forward and backward. There's an outside in movement. The arm leads by feeling, the spine follows the arm, and the pelvis follows the spine. <laughs> we do this a few more times. So it's an absolutely multi wonderful <laughs> multidimensional mobilization of the shoulder, the spine, and the hip joints. One more time. Both arms fly overhead, and then we alternate five times. <laughs> How rhythmical and smooth is this movement? Pause. Open your arms, arm circle down, arm arc arm circle. Now we are adding movement. With the arm circle, sit back, active forward fold, lift. Press the front foot away from the body, 
release the push. By pushing the foot away, the knee starts to extend front knee. One more time. And then halfway arm circle. Place your left hand onto the floor in line with the left knee. Your left arm is a pillar of strength upon which you drape your upper body. Top rib cage, the ribs fan open. You have the longest side bend spaciousness on the underside. And then reach the top arm down. By feeling you let the ribs follow the arm, the spine follow the ribs. And then you take the arm overhead, side stretch. And now the temporarily here, the sternum takes over. You revolve it up towards the ceiling and then you reach the arm back and up on a diagonal, arm overhead, spiraling down. The pelvis revolves into the opposite direction. Reach the arm sideways again, side stretch. Sternum towards the ceiling, arm back, spiraling up. Lift the pubic bone. Spiral down one more time. Actually, it's the, not quite the last time, but we do one more full round of spiraling down into side stretch, spiraling up, creating limberness in the upper body. It's fascial strength and fascial glide coupled with muscle strength and length. Then you place your hand onto the floor. You walk both of your hands forward. You turn the front leg out, unwinding side bend towards the right side. Turn forward again, aligning your leg. And then you curl up into a 90-90 kneeling position. Left hand to the front of the hip, right hand onto the knee and into a controlled fall. Your upper body doesn't move. It's dynamically stabilized. All you do, slightly shift the weight forward, let the body fall, let the elastic fascia of the leg catch the body and recoil it up. And now let's walk out in a double rhythm. So still elasticizing the lower body while the upper body is dynamically stabilized. And also enhancing adaptability. Now I love this transition. So in terms of elasticity, we have foot, Achilles tendon a little bit, calf, muscle fascia, quadriceps fascia. Now we're going into the adductor fascia. Single rhythm, hip release. Now when you move into the hip release, you want to bounce back. So before you're at the end range, with your foot, push away a little bit. So you push and it recoils you back. Let's add the arm for momentum. Now it's the swinging of the arm and that light push of the foot that is recoiling you up. Exhalation into the movement, inhalation out of the hip release movement. One more time dynamic. Slow down the motion, place your right hand onto the floor next to the foot and then reach your left arm overhead, kneeling lateral angle pose. Heel, knee, pull them towards each other, wrap the inner thighs out and around and with your arm, your knee, they can press against each other and gently the sternum revolves up towards the ceiling. Press your right foot, away from the body, float up, side bend, and center. Turn the knee down onto the floor, high kneeling position again, hands to the front of the hips, inhale, sit back, exhalation, curl up, balancing on the go, fluid bilateral movement, arch, lift the sternum, and center. Turn the left foot out, lift the left knee up, establish a 90-90 gate pose, 
activity in the center, you glide into hip release, you explore your end range, you lift out of the end range movement, this is your new end range, pull heel, knee towards each other, lengthening and strengthening the inner thighs and bringing energy through fascial connections into the pelvic floor, into the deep abdominals, the depth of the lower back. Push the foot away, the muscle tone goes down, and you walk forward in a very unhurried, deliberate manner until you have arrived in 1990 kneeling, where you elongate your spine, raise your arms overhead, spiraling twist to the left, place your right hand against the outside of the knee, inhalation, spiral around, exhalation, release the pressure. So again, we are coupling two arts. One, actively elongating the spine and then allowing a recoil, the other, letting the spine be spiraled around and recoiled. Add your left arm, so you turn the palm forward and you gradually lift the arm. What does it do? It additionally tensions the fascia we intend to elasticize and it can give us a really nice lift. So let's do this one more time and then you swing the arm forward and back in an easeful manner. So can you integrate the arm in one movement, deliberately stabilized, integrated, and then let it swing freely? Outside in movement. One more time, both arms overhead, open spiraling twist, take the pelvis along, swing the arm forwards and backwards. Now this movement has so many benefits. It certainly benefits us in every step we take, but it goes really deep, like this is vitalizing the inner organs. <laughs> so we're moving from the outside in, in terms of muscles and fascia, but also all the way in to the internal organs. One more, both arms fly overhead, brain work, coordination alternating the arms, the spiral. Last one. And then both arms fly overhead. <laughs> Open your arms in an arm circle, you need to think about that, arm arc. And then adaptability, so we're going from rhythmic dynamic movement to slower movements. Shift back, sit back, arm circle, and then lift back up. So I love this movement too, like it's wonderful for stability sideways or on the sides of the pelvis, gentle back strength, but also a softening and hydrating of the hip flexor fascia, from which many of us benefit. Arms to shoulder level, place your right hand in line with the right knee, shift the pelvis over the knee, you're in the side stretch position, push the hand against the floor, reach the arm overhead. Shoulder is stabilized without being elevated or retracted. Just good stability in the shoulder joint so you can reach down, fully lengthen the body. If you feel a stretch going down the back of the ribs into the lower back to the pelvis, that is wonderful. Side stretch. And then you revolve the sternum up towards the ceiling, you reach back, you lift through the pubic bone, side stretch, spiraling down. Mobilizing the upper body, promoting glide in the fascial layers, which gives us movement ease. And once again, we are working deep here into the organ system. So massaging the organs both ways, but I love the way down, feels very hugging, and then lifting and creating space, vital space for the inner organs. And then you can spiral down one more time. Walk both of your hands forward. Turn the front leg out 
and unwinding side bend towards the right side, left side. <laughs> and then you align the leg forward again and the upper body too, to curl up into a 90-90 kneeling position. Upper body centered, dynamically stabilized, controlled full. Now at the moment, your knee travels in line with the base of the second or third toe, goes forward of the ankle, forward of the toes is fine too, as long as it feels springy. If you go too far, push a little bit with the foot, like you did before. Start to turn out. Now the alignment changes. So we are out of this ideal alignment, so in double rhythm, stepping out. And life is sometimes just sub-ideal. So we want to prepare the body to respond to external circumstances that might be challenging. So yeah, walking out into a dynamic hip release, which is in gate pose, that's where you switch to a single rhythm. Remember the pressing away of the foot. Controlled full, and by pressing the foot lightly away, you give yourself a little bit more lift. Exhale and inhale. Add the arm. Adding the arm, adding momentum, and it again can us give a little bit more up, <laughs> upswing, <laughs> recoiling out of the hip release position. So you go a few more times in a rhythmical, elastic manner. Slow down the movement. From rhythmical, elastic to steady, kneeling lateral angle pose. Knee, heel, draw them together. Lengthen the side of the body. Feel or visualize one line from the knee to the hip, to the armpit, to the fingertips. This is a strong pose, hold it and then press the left foot away from the body so your upper body floats up with ease, side bend, center. Turn the leg in, bring the lower leg back, hands to the front of the pelvis, sit back, curl up, and center. Same movement, if you like, with arms, otherwise no arms, your choice. Sit back and arm circle, curl up, arm arc. Inhale, exhale. It's a slower movement into the sit back. It's a more dynamic, fluid movement, curl up. One last time, and you are moving, if you like, straight from curl up into one arch. And then center, sit all the way down into low kneeling. Lean forward, tuck your toes under, push up onto the feet, extend the legs, forward fold leg stretch, and then start to roll up slowly into a centered standing position. Now I want to finish on our feet because you will be walking somewhere. So you can place the domes in front of your feet and then look straight ahead, widen your gaze and then walk forwards and see if you can find and explore the domes with your feet. So you're walking over the domes, and then you start walking off the domes. Give your heels a little bit of extra attention, and then ground your feet. Enjoy the groundedness, center the body, Raise your arms forward and upward with an arm arc. Open your arms with arm circle. Exhalation, arm arc. Inhalation, arm circle. Deep stability, dynamic with the arm arc. 
and then broadness in the ribs, unloading the shoulders with the arm circle. Let's do this one more time. So it's inner calm, arms down, and then adding on, arms overhead, with the inhalation, lift the sternum, spread your arms wide, and release. Inhalation, arch, V-arms, exhalation, release. So you arch and you find your center immediately. You integrate the arms and you release them. And then still with your eyes relaxed, you start to walk backwards. Even if you are wondering where the domes are, you let your feet find the domes. Walking backwards over the domes, somatic thrusts. And then you let the forefoot drape over the domes. If that feels too unstable, of course, you can step all the way down onto the floor. Lift from the underside of the feet. Arm arc into an arch and a release. Inhale. Active lengthening, glide, tensile strength, recoil, opening, lifting the front of the body, integration. And then you step back. Once again, you find your feet on the floor, arm arc, you let your arms fall, you let the knees dynamically bend and extend. Upswing with your arms. Two more times. And then you circle the arms down, and I hope you feel inside out invigorated. <laughs>